Okay, today we're going to talk about the uh, cardiovascular changes in pregnancy. So I'd first like to talk about blood volume. As you can see, uh, blood volume increases uh, throughout pregnancy and uh, it peaks at about 40% 40 above uh, pre-pregnancy levels. Uh, the uh, red cell mass increases less than the plasma volume and so you have a physiologic anemia of pregnancy uh, so that you might start uh, pregnancy with a hemoglobin of 13 and a term it's uh, 11.5. So this non-parallel increase in red cell mass versus plasma volume accounts for the physiologic anemia of pregnancy. So the first thing we'll talk about is blood pressure and in pregnancy uh, it really doesn't change. Uh, one of the things you'll find out is that uh, some of the literature says it might decrease slightly, so five millimeters of mercury in uh, systolic and diastolic. Uh, but I think for teaching purposes, it's it's easier to think of as it doesn't really change. And the other thing that you'll see is that um, different sources uh, tell you slightly different things, uh, but. Uh, for all practical purposes, the blood pressure doesn't change in pregnancy. Uh, the next thing we talk about is central venous pressure, and uh, that doesn't change either. So the normal central venous pressure is four plus or minus three millimeters of mercury, or one to seven. And the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure doesn't change either, and it's six to twelve millimeters of mercury. Now if we've had this 40 percent increase in blood volume and yet the filling pressure of the right heart, the centrovenous pressure, and the filling pressure of the left heart, the wedge, doesn't change, uh, how is that possible? Well, where's, where's your blood? It's in the, about 70 percent is in the venous system. And so you have a, in pregnancy you have a uh, marked increase in the venous capacitance vessels and the other 30 percent in the arteries and, and uh, capillaries and, and arterioles and venules. So you've got this big uh, increase in, in uh, venous uh, volume uh, so that uh, although they had a 40 percent increase in blood volume the, the filling pressures remain normal. Now what happens to cardiac output in pregnancy? Cardiac output increases about 40% in pregnancy throughout the course of the pregnancy uh, due to an increase in heart rate and stroke volume. So heart rate goes up from about 68 to about 88 beats per minute at term. And stroke volume increases from about 75 to 90 beats. I'm sorry, mils per beat, mill, milliliters per beat. Now, the systemic vascular resistance decreases in pregnancy due to the AV shunt effect of the placenta and the vasodilator effects of progesterone and, and uh, prostaglandins. So there's, the systemic vascular resistance will go from about 1,400 in a non-pregnant state to around 1,000 nine second per centimeter to the minus five and the pulmonary vascular resistance goes down also from about say 150 nine second per centimeter to minus five to 100. If you remember Ohm's law E equals I R volts equals amps times resistance. Turn that into cardiovascular physiology blood pressure equals cardiac output times systemic vascular resistance. So you see in pregnancy when the blood volume increases, cardiac output increases 40 percent or so and the blood pressure remains normal, you have to drop, have a drop in systemic vascular resistance. Now, in labor, uh, 
the uh, cardiac output will increase another 40 percent <laughs> so uh, due to the pain uh, and uh, work of, of pushing the baby out so um, cardiac output increases up to 80 percent above pre-pregnant levels uh, at term and second stage labor the other point I'd make is uh, if you have bleeding you tend to translocate blood centrally and uh, have venal constriction translocate blood centrally and maintain your filling pressure central venous pressure and uh, have very little change in your vital signs and after you've lost about 1500 to 2000 cc's of blood depending on your size you go suddenly into shock 